Hey, it's Whoops here with the second task of the Yasraj event. You have to complete the Ajara bounty with all three actually dying in the exact same turn. This is actually pretty easy if you have access to fire, but there are other ways to actually do it too. And I did find three ways to actually complete this, though the last way you are going to have a more difficult time to actually do it than either of the other two builds. So let's begin. The first build that I used was fire. We just went full out with all the fire synergy, though I don't think I actually brought in either Chigi or Antonidas, and only really relied on Geddon, Belinda, and Ragnaros to actually get up to the boss and to complete the boss itself. For Geddon, we are using Mark of Conflagration. For Belinda, we're using Lesser Water Elemental. For Ragnaros, we're using Blazing Rune. Chigi, we're using Blazing Ban, Antonidas we're using Cinder Core Staff, and Cookie we're using Appetizers. Again, you probably won't actually need to bring in any additional mercenaries, but if you have access to the first three, then you'll be perfectly fine with both the boss and getting to the boss. For the second way that I found to actually do this was Holy. Holy also does pretty well for this just because of the fact that you do have a Wii damage within this build but you need to be very careful of not actually hitting the loyal myrmidon because if you do you are just going to be killing it way quicker than the other two so you're going to want to hard focus down the, the tide mistress and also do a little bit of cleave damage to queen ajara this build we are using harmonic mallet on anduin we're using tome of inspiration on volin for Zyrula, we're using a Radiant Wand, and then Varian, if I ever had to bring him in, was War Banner, but I didn't have to bring in anyone besides the first three, as you do have a lot of healing within this composition. And finally, for probably the hardest way to actually do this, but you can actually do this as a completely new player, Samuro, Zyrula, Cariel as the most free-to-play friendly version of this. As the third way to actually do this, with Rokara, Cornelius and Cookie on the bench. I think I brought in Rokara towards the end just to help finish off one of the finish off one of the targets since this doesn't really have too much AoE and Cariel is probably going to actually die before you can actually finish off this task. For Samuro, we're using Burning Blade. For Zyril, we're using Radiant Wand. Cariel, we're using Tome of Light. And Rokara, we're using Helm of Inspiration, but that's not really necessary, and nor is the equipment on Cornelius, which is Shield of Dawn or Cookie's Appetizers. That all being said, let's look at how I did this with Fire, then we'll look at how I did this with Holy, and then finally with the Zyrula, Cariel, and Samuro combo. Okay, so for Fire, we are just going to be putting down Geddon, Belinda, and Ragnaros. We got the splitting treasure on Belinda, but it isn't really necessary at all because we should be able to actually finish this task off pretty quickly in one or two turns. We're going to hard focus down Queen Ajara for the most part, try to freeze her up. See what I mean by the loyal Myrmidon actually dying pretty quickly if you hard focus it down. And here, we should just be able to finish this off really easily by targeting that, and then doing this. If you don't have the splitting treasure, then just target Queen Ajara with Belinda instead. Time for Holy. This is going to take a little bit longer than the fire comp, just because it is a bit slower. And you have to be a lot more careful where you're actually targeting your damage. We do have the cookie treasure. Again, not completely necessary. It does do 15 extra damage. But honestly, I would have almost preferred to not actually have access to that treasure, to be honest. A treasure that's actually really helpful, though, when you're using Holy, is if you have Balinar as a way to just heal yourself up to full. Isn't necessary, but just worth mentioning. We're only going to use Zyrilla here just because we don't want the bleed on everything. Though we are in a really good build to just allow the bleed to go off. I just didn't want to risk it. I guess we're just passing the turn again because we don't want to be frozen.
And we're just going to pass the turn once again because we don't want to be frozen once again. It's really annoying when she has the don't do anything back and forth, back and forth again. But, and we have it for a third turn. We're going to use Valinar just to heal everything up to full anyways. I don't think this actually triggered that at all, which is kind of weird. Maybe treasures just don't trigger it. We don't have enough damage to actually kill everything here yet. So we're probably just going to target the Tide Mistress. Actually, we could just do a Zara get rid of the at. And do the AoE. I think we should be fine by just doing it like this once and then we need to repeat this step one more time. We're mainly doing this just because of the fact that we got an arcane orb and I don't want to deal with it. Yeah, so if we just hold out until we can actually do the combo one more time, we just win from here. Then here we'll do full combo and complete the task. And now time for the last way I actually did this task. We got Wind Fury on Samuro, though we probably don't actually want it. Mainly due to the fact that it makes this really unpredictable if we actually will be able to keep them alive for a longer period of time. Because here we don't specialize in AoE damage, we're just trying to do single target damage. Which is why I'm not trying to trigger Samuro's double hit on his first ability here. I'm going to do some damage to the Myrmidon. Though we did accidentally trigger the double strike there. I should have been paying attention about that and then targeted something else instead, but it is what it is. We're going to try to kill the little ball just to do it. Then we're going to heal up a little bit with Cariel. She's going to spawn another ball. See what I mean by being a little bit unpredictable if you do choose that treasure. We also did have the boon, which isn't completely necessary either. If any of your mercenaries get real low, especially Samuro, which is your main source of damage, use Cariel's third ability and Zyreal's second ability to just keep him alive. He's the most important here. If you can find a Valinar, you're in a really good position. It's not necessary, but worth mentioning. I'm going to do some damage to Azjara. The nice thing about this though is even though we do get frozen by using Samuro's mirror images, it doesn't really matter at all. And here we probably should have put down Rokara, though I did try to keep the Zyrilla alive for an additional turn, which might be a little bit of a mistake here. Rokara might have been a better way to actually just finish this off. We're going to redirect the damage from Zyrilla to Cornelius. The orb is going to explode again, but it only takes Cornelius with it, so it doesn't really matter too much. Then we'll put down Rokara. And here we're going to use Orc Onslaught on the Tide Mistress. Use Zyrilla's first ability on the Loyal Marunon. And then finally use Double Strike on Queen Ajara. And voila. Alright, I hope this video was helpful for you to unlock Yasharaj. And if it was, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And until the next guide... Bye-bye.